the more you become pro-Sharia, you wear your head cover with pride. This is the kind of feminism that Islam produces. Islam produces a kind of woman who has pride in bondage. I defend Sharia. I defend polygamy. I defend jihad. I am proud. I stand in front of the camera and say, I'm proud to give my son to jihad. <coughs> and then, you, next day, you become a member of parliament. This is the kind of feminism that you have in the Muslim world. Islam honors radical women. If a woman doesn't want to have that cover, she wants to be pro-peace and, and pro-West, they call her a whore. She, she throw, they throw at her house some, she's a whore. Nobody will marry her or her daughter. You're talking to a very dysfunctional system. I lived under it. And I have a whole, several chapters on the topic, and this is a very good question. Because actually, American colleges, universities, have Middle East Studies Department, Islamic Studies Department. And who are heading these departments? Okay. First of all, they are financed by Arab money. Hmm? And the teachers, the women teachers there, they're all sent by Saudi Arabia. They are sent by the Arab world. And these women wear the head cover with pride. And they tell, <coughs> we, Islam honors us. And their salaries are coming from the Middle East. Islam honors women. Sharia is not bad for us. You American women, are, uh, you have babies out of wedlock, which is really true. We have our problems in this country too. We have problems. But they are you, they are proud, pride in bondage, like I said. Yeah. My question is, um, while on the subject of Saudi Arabia and how wealthy they are, I was in Israel for like the first time, probably a few months, about a month or so, uh -huh. and I could see how the Palestinians are living and what they're doing with my own eyes. So I'm curious as to why do the you know the Palestinian Muslims, why are they so dead set about staying in Israel, living like they live, instead of why not go to Saudi Arabia, let them hire them because live in luxury or live okay. there's so many wealthy Arab nations. Why do Why? you want to live? Because they, they want to stay in Israel because they, they, you know, they want to be the, the fifth column in Israel. When, when the, uh, they, they think that if they leave, because the Arab world wants them to stay there, because they want to make it a one-state solution. And I'm against the one-state solution. What's the one-state solution? You, you put the Palestinians and Jews to, to live together happily ever after, it's not going to happen. No, no. So they are, the Arab world doesn't want to absorb the Palestinians. It's the policy of the Arab League. Mm -hmm. The policy of the Arab League is to never give citizenship, never to give citizenship to any Palestinian in any Arab country. Mm -hmm. But don't the Palestinians see this? Don't yeah, because I'll tell you why. Because Palestinians have been abused, used uh, by the whole Arab world. Mm -hmm. How did it happen? After the 48th war, they told them, oh, you sold your country. You, you didn't defend your country. So you, you are not worthy of being called Arab. And you know, Arabs are such proud people. Oh, you know, you can make it manipulate <coughs> Arab just by telling him you don't have an honor. Oh my god, I don't have honor? I have to go and kill everybody. Huh? Mm -hmm. So when you tell Palestinians have been shamed, blamed, pampered, abused, and used by the whole Arab world, telling them, you are a traitor. This is a, a culture that's based on pride and shame. And they are, until now, would rather to, to kill themselves than, than being called a traitor. But 
same people that was refusing to give them citizenship and help them, they're yeah. giving them because they tell and, them. And, and, and tear, you know, and that world pockets. tells them if we give you citizenship, you're going to be absorbed and you won't get your country back. We don't want to absorb you. We want you to stand at the border and to fight. That's the plan. The plan is not to absorb them and make them happy and build, a, and build them schools and universities and infrastructure. The plan is to keep them at the border without a job to do jihad. That's the Arab League plan. I mean, look at the, the, look at the Palestinians. They live in this shame, looking at the Arab world living in shame. Shame. They, they cannot, they, they stand in line for work, not on the borders with Egypt, not on the borders with Saudi Arabia, not on the borders with Syria or Jordan. They stand up in line for work on the borders with Israel, the same country they are supposed to terrorize. It's an impossible situation. It has never happened in history. It's the only refugee. This situation. 66 years of, of a standstill making people refugees for 66 years with all the oil money and the billions they have, it's impossible. It's planned. It's not because they're poor. They're not poor. That's what I have Saudi Arabia and the, Arab, the, the Gulf states are all the billions that have been given to the Palestinians by international, Arab, and America, the United Nations, all these billions since for 65 years. Do you think they, they could not have created heaven on earth in their, in their, they could, but that's not what they want. The plan is to end Israel, and the only way to end Israel is to keep the stalemate, keep them refugees, keep them miserable, keep them unhappy, because this is the only way they're gonna fight. They want fighters. They don't want happy people. They want fighters. Of course, I saw you first time tonight, and many of us saw you first time. First time. The new for in the campus, the new, the new speak. Um, and like tonight, you came here and gave us a beautiful meeting. Uh, depressing, but it seems beautiful, but impact. But I would like to ask you, who is helping to promote you? Who is helping them to tell this moral? Nobody. <laughs> God. <laughs> to help so me because so what we all have a community. I come from Russian community. People come here. People from Russia are no tyranny. Just like people like me. Uh, okay. We come from different communities here. Yeah. And uh, actually, my son also, like you, stays in the campuses, really? in the college campuses. Oh, good. Through the Jewish visitor uh, center. And it's very interesting when you speak here. So, what can be done in order to, this, to be nationwide? To be nationwide, you speak. You speak. Because this is the only thing we can really do. Because in small groups like those, we are Jews, we would like to have no peace in Israel. When 9 11 happened, you remember when 9 11 happened? People in the media in America said, Where are the Arab Americans who, who should speak against this? So I started speaking right after 9 11. Did they adopt me? No. After one year of speaking, they called me Islamophobe. The same people who said, where are the Arab Americans to speak against 9-11? Because the American people don't want to know. Or they are too Many of them or they don't are want to too don't good want to believe in evil. They don't believe in evil. They don't. No, they, they believe in evil. They I believe in evil that. only for the Tea Party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people believe everybody is good. It's yeah. Naive. See? It's naive. It's, it's a mixture. I don't think the American people are that stupid. I think it's, it's, we, and the American people don't want to be shamed. We have a media that shames everybody in America, calling them racist, bigots, Islamophobe, 
racist. The American people hate to be called racist. They don't want to be called racist. And it doesn't matter. Racism is everywhere around the world. This is not only in America. I mean, in Egypt, people oppress each other, the same race, and they still oppress each other. But no, no, no. I, ju I, I just want to say because people are starting to leave. And, yes. And in the answer, one of the answers to the last question that was asked is for people to buy your books. Yes. Right? Because you're not supported by any organization, and yeah. the world needs to hear you, and you need to, you need to be able to control. Sure. If you'd like, I will sign the books. Yes. I have uh, my first, second, and third book. I hear. And they're good. <laughs> So it's uh, $15 for a paperback and $25 for a hardcover, right? But if whoever wants to stay, and if you sure. can still stand, and if people have more questions. Sure, sure. Which book would you recommend to read? I think uh, the paperback, uh, the first one, is uh, it, it's good to read them. Uh,